to another video. I don't know, it's called for taking two videos today? What? What's going on here? <sighs> like I said, we back up in this baby. This baby. Yeah. I don't know. Sorry, I'm really Anyways, so basically, we're doing another reaction video. That's two. Double upload. Heck yeah. Um, basically, this one's gonna be about um, scariest things that happen to school buses. Now, if you wanna watch the original video, leave it in the description down below me. Anyways, so, uh, <laughs> sorry. Um, basically, this is by uh, Mr. Nightmare. If you wanna go subscribe to him, go support him, go ahead, this will be in the all of this stuff will be in the description down below. Um, but yeah, guys, uh, make sure to hit that like button down below. Subscribe, leave a comment. What is your favorite scary movie? And your favorite um, food to eat with it? Like to watch with it. Duh, duh, brain. Anyways, um, with that being said, let it go. They froze it. Let it go. I'll stop. I'll stop being cringe. Let's go. July 15th, 1976, Chowchilla, California, a day that the town would like to forget forever, yet remains a part of its history. At around 4 p.m., school bus driver Ed Ray was driving 26 students of Dairyland Elementary School home from a summer class trip to the Chowchilla Fairground swimming pool. Ray was described as a humble rancher with a humble day job, stocky, about 55 years old, a guy you would not want to pick a fight with, a guy who works with his hands and doesn't talk much. On this particular day, Ed's bus was rowdy, but the kids all loved him for his patience and reliability. The kids were all loud and excited after just having spent the afternoon swimming. Some of them were even singing, but when the bus turns onto Avenue 21, Ray sees a white Dodge van blocking the road with its door open. He tries to weave around the empty van, when a guy in overalls with a pantyhose covering his face jumps out in front of the bus with a revolver. Oh man, I was gonna say a joke when he said pantyhose, but then he said revolver. No, that's not okay. The man walks to the driver's <clears throat> side window and asks Ed, with no intimidation in his voice, Would you open the door, please? Ed opens it. This fool. Two more identically dressed figures jump in, one with a rifle which is quickly pointed at Ed. Everybody goes to the back of the bus. The one without a rifle starts to drive, and the one with the revolver hops in the van to follow them. They drive about a mile, and park the bus in a bamboo thicket. The entire ride was apparently so silent that it added to the pure horror of it. The bus was hidden near the Chowchilla River, and twelve kids were ushered into the white van that was following the bus. Ray and the other 14 kids got into the back of the second van that was waiting at the location, this one green. There was a partition separating the driver's seat to the back of the van, and all the people back in town. It only took 15 minutes after the bus not showing up that parents began to wonder what was going on. That's how punctual Ed always was. Within the hour, the missing bus was being talked about on the local news stations. Parents helped police by tracing the route the bus usually took, and by that evening, they found the abandoned bus. Within hours, 30 FBI agents arrived on the scene and an intense investigation was underway to find the kids and Ed. Late that night, the vans finally arrive at a rock quarry 100 miles away in Livermore, 3.30 in the morning, at which point Ed had been awake for 24 hours. The back doors of the van swing open and two guys are waiting. Ed is the first one out. He's handed a flashlight and then told to strip and then go down a hole with a ladder in it. Above ground, roll call is being taken for the children, and their names are written as they're made to leave the bus one by one. Then they're stripped and sent to join Ed down the ladder into what was referred to as the hole, which turned out to be an old moving van, which had been placed in a large dugout hole 12 feet underground. Ed immediately worried that the ceiling would cave in or that they'd suffocate. However, there were two air shafts, hoses that ran above ground to a tree. There were also some mattresses on the ground and a pathetic amount of necessities. Wonder Bread, Peanut Butter, Potato Chips, Water Jugs, and some holes carved for toilets. After all the kids were inside, one of the captors said, we'll be Panic ensued in the trailer when it was realized what was happening. 
Ed tried his best to keep everybody calm. Ed and Michael Marshall, the oldest kid in the group, who was 14, started to push at the lid to try and open it, but it was pointless. So by now, Ed instructed everyone to eat and get some rest. Twelve hours later, the food was already consumed, and the ventilation system that was keeping the van cool stopped working, and the hot July air started to fill the tight space. On top of that, the roof of the van started to cave in, and Ed knew time was very limited. The survivors, now adults, recount that around this time, as the walls and ceiling of the van were caving in and there was no food left, that they were starting to realize they wouldn't likely make it out of this alive. Ed and Michael started to pile up the mattresses in the trailer to get to the roof, which had been covered with a heavy sheet of metal and weighted down with two 100-pound industrial batteries. After hours of effort, Ray and Michael wedged the lid open with a piece of wood and moved the batteries. They then dug away the remainder of the debris block in the entrance. Sixteen hours after they had entered the van, the group emerged and walked to the quarry's guard shack, where a security guard called the police. Ed and the children were brought to a nearby jail, where they were fed and interviewed by police. So the captors were three men, Frederick Newall Woods, James Schoenfeld, and his brother Richard. Frederick's family owned the quarry. Or anything right now, but honestly, they look like something from like dumb... Dumb, dumber, dumber, I forgot the movie. It, it'll be somewhere on the screen. Um, that honestly, I don't know. That the van was buried at. The three men were finding themselves in financial struggles, so they plan to hijack the bus and demand a $5 million ransom to release the group. The men would flee when they saw the group escaped, though, but they were found after a two week manhunt. They were found guilty and sentenced to life with the possibility of parole. Richard Schoenfeld was released in 2012, and James Schoenfeld was paroled on August 7, 2015. Frederick Woods was denied parole 15 times because he owned the quarry. However, in March of this year, he was granted parole as well. Rightfully so, people of Chowchilla and people around the world were sickened at the fact that the three men who committed this kind of monstrous act could ever roam the streets again. If Michael and Ed hadn't stepped up and dug the group out of that van, they likely would not have survived. Ed Ray died at 91 in May 17th of 2012, but he is still to this day remembered as a hero. What you just heard- Well, I think I'm gonna end it there because, you know, every moment. But, um, yeah guys, thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you guys liked it, hit that like button in the face like a boss. And make sure you give everyone the vibes everywhere all, all around us. Make sure you're gonna be good out there, my fellow friends, family, and subscribers. Um, like I said, leave a comment down with your favorite movie and your favorite food to eat with it. Like watching the movie. Um, anyways, if, like I said, if you want to watch, watch the full video, that's in the description down below. At least, like I said, Mr. Nightmare's channel. Um, but yeah, guys, and have a nice day. Do good. Be safe, everyone. Goodbye.